Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 9. So this time we're going to take a look at some UI, mainly uh, on our middle of our screen, so some text. Uh, we'll look at animating it as well and we'll look at combining a couple of things together to create, for example, a sequence of events when we fall off and die. So firstly, what I'd like to do is go to our canvas, which is, if I can find it, right there. Double click to kind of get it in the center. And what we'll do is we will add in game object, UI, text. Now I'm going to start off with something that says you fell, just to make things nice and simple. So the text is going to say you fell. And I'm going to add in the font that we had used for our, uh, our timer up there. So straight onto there. I'm going to have this as, uh, let's have it as white and let's have it as size 60. And then obviously we just need to resize this to about there. And I'm going to anchor it in the middle and position is going to be dead center so we can move it using our little tool up here, the rect tool. So you felt that's the middle and let's have it as bold. In fact, no, I don't like the bold. It kind of meshes it too much. So let's increase the size to maybe 70. Okay, perfect. Back in the center. And now what I'm going to do is right click, create empty and uncouple those two. So this empty game object becomes part of the canvas and then the text gets dragged into that game object. So right click, rename the text, fell, 0, 1. Let's right click and rename the game object and have it as you fell. And I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate fell 0, 1, change it to red and decrease it just a little bit, maybe to 68. Zoom in and just move it ever so slightly about there. Just to give it a little bit of you know, something else so it's not exactly boring. Right click, rename and call it fell02. So now, like we did previously with our ledge, we're going to animate you fell. So in our animations folder and animation, firstly what we're going to need to do is basically set both of these to be, uh, how can I put it, invisible. So let's start with the color and set the alpha to zero. Same applies to fell zero two, set the alpha to zero. Uh, let's also set, uh, in fact, no, we'll, we'll leave that as it is. So let's go on fell zero one, create new animation. We'll call it fell zero one, same as the name itself. And remember we press record and I want this to appear over the course of, let's say, one second. So our first keyframe is zero. So let's reset our alpha back to zero. So if we set it as one and set it back to zero, it will set these little diamond shapes here to say our first keyframe is set. And now we click off that. So by the 60th frame, which is one second, we want to have the alpha as full. So we set it to 255. Press X on that and you can see that keyframe is set right there and then press the record button to stop that. The same will then apply to fell 02. So create and we'll have fell 02. Same again, press record. First keyframe zero, we need to set the alpha back as zero. So if we overwrite with a number, and then write it over again with a zero, it sets that alpha in the first keyframe. So then by one second, we want this to be full alpha. So 255, hit enter, press X, and press the record button again to stop that uh, from recording. So what we need to do at this point is take a look at these animations themselves. We need to untick loop time on both of those animations. The reason we do that is because we want the animation to play only once. We don't want it to keep playing. 
So if we press play now, we should see in the middle of our screen, you fell appear. Perfect. We want that to then appear as soon as we fall off. So to do that, let's disable you fell game object. So let's turn it off up here. Now what we need to do is go to our scripts folder and we'll find um, level death, this one right here. So we need to add these into that script just to add a little bit of extra something to the game. But we're going to need to use an I enumerator. So in the same principle as what we did with the timer, because we're dealing with time within this script, we need to use the I enumerator. So to do that, we'll start off by declaring the variable that is ufel. So public game object, I'll just call it ufel, semicolon. Now let's create our method by going I enumerator and let's call it you fell off. So simple. And what we need to do at that point is as soon as this loads up, this particular method, we're going to activate you fell. So you fell dot set active true semicolon. And then we're going to wait for, let's say, uh, in fact, let's wait for about three seconds because we're going to add a little something else to this as well later on in this tutorial. So we'll go for yield, return new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, three. So after three seconds, what we'll do is actually load scene zero. So we can cut this line away and place it in the I enumerator method down here. And now to activate this, as soon as we collide with the trigger, we need to set off this I enumerator and we do that with the start coroutine. Start coroutine, and in brackets, you fell off, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now let's quickly test out what we've done here before we carry on with anything else. And it's death object. We just need to apply you fell to there. And let's press play and check this out. There we go. So what I think we'll do as well is we will stop the music from playing. Uh, if I can remember where it was, it's on main camera and it is level audio. So let's define that as a game object, public game object level audio and as soon as we fall off we'll also set the level audio off level audio dot set active false semicolon and save and now let's add those to that script uh, so death object and add that variable in so the next thing we're going to do is create a fade screen a fade screen is going to be used after a couple of seconds when we die, so it fades to that black screen to reset the whole level. So if we go to game object and go to UI and go to raw image, it'll present you with a little white thing in the middle of your screen. And I'm simply going to change this to black. Next, I'm going to stretch it, which on the anchoring position is this bottom right one and then set everything to zero. Much in the same way we did with a raw image in the other scene, except this one, we need to change the alpha to zero. And raw image, so right click, rename, fade out, it's going to be called. So in our animations folder, what we'll do is create the animation for it. So we're gonna fade over the course of one second so create and let's have this fade out anim and at this point you should be able to see how animations are having an effect on the different objects within the game especially with the ui at the moment so let's press record first keyframe let's set that alpha back to zero perfect 
So then, again, by the 60th frame, one second, we need to be full alpha. Perfect. And now press the record button again to stop. Back to projects. And click on the fade out anim and untick loop time. And I'm going to save my project right there. So last thing we need to do is untick fade out and then define that as a variable in the level death again. So public game object will have this fade out semicolon. I'm just going to change that to a lowercase l there and there. And so obviously it's going to be fade out dot so. In fact, I'm in the wrong place there. What I'll do is change from wait for seconds to, and then after we waited for two seconds, we will have fade out dot set active true semicolon, and then we'll wait again for another second before we change the scene. So let's have that as one and save that script. Head back to Unity and death object and let's set those variables again because I changed the level audio name didn't I? So fade out goes on to the fade out object, level audio onto level audio. Save my scene and let's give this a try. This sequence event should be quite nice now. You fell? Yes. There we go. So you can see that sequence of events working quite nicely there. We fall off. We may uh, put in, you know, a bit of a, a jingle for a death sound uh, next tutorial. But you can see what's happening here. Now the same principle will kind of apply when we complete the level. So if I kind of get down here to the finish game trigger, I think we should edit what we've got here. So if we double click here on our finish game trigger, we have the script named finish level. We can double click here to access it in Visual Studio. And what we'll do is we'll add in, uh, let's add in some game objects, which is going to be, so we'll add in three UI elements. So public game object. And the first one will be uh, time left semicolon public game object and it's going to be the score semicolon and finally public game object let's add this as total score semicolon and let's save that there so these are the three objects we need to create in our scene now so we need time left which is going to re uh, be relative to our time our current score that we scored, which will be up at the top right again. And then finally, a combination of the two. So, game object, UI, and text. And uh, double click, and let's get it center. Uh, let's have text white. And let's have it say, uh, time left and i'm just going to put zero for now because it's something we'll modify in the next episode when we get into more mathematics uh, font size let's have as 32 let's change the size and uh, let's lift it up but i still have it center so right click rename time left hold control press d to duplicate bring it down to there and we'll have score. I'll also have that as zero for now, but I think I'm going to center all of these on the alignment. Uh, right click, rename, current score, hold control, press D. I'm going to bring this one down just a little bit more, but I'm also going to add in another UI element, raw image, just a line to separate. So squeeze that up. And I'll use this here, bring it down to about there. And let's see, width, let's set it to 150, no, it's too small, 200. So just to test what it looks like on the screen, that's what it's going to look like. Perfect. So we can always refine it if we need to.
So raw image pull out there. I'm going to keep it named raw image. Call this total score. And I'm going to actually I'll attach raw image to current score. So those objects appear together. And what I'll do is this is going to be an I enumerator again. So void on trigger enter. After level complete dot play, we're going to have start co routine calculate score. Open close bracket, close bracket, and semicolon. So that means I enumerator calculate score. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And at this point, we're going to have time left dot set active true and then yield return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for 0 0.25 seconds and we need to put the f at the end of there because it's a float semicolon and then we'll have the score dot set active true Again, wait for a quarter of a second. And then total score dot set active true. And we'll wait for another quarter of a second just to be on the safe side and save that script. So again, you can see the sequence of events that is occurring to get this working. So finish game trigger, let's set those uh, variables up. So time left current score and total score and then finally let's disable those three objects up here press play and let's test this out oh well we're testing the you fell again there apparently because my terrible gaming skills guys so hopefully we should be able to go over here now and the sequence of events will occur. There we go. So you can see what's happening there, it appears. Maybe it needs to be a little bit longer. Maybe we should actually put that as one second. Let's try all that. See if that looks any better. Well, again, it's up to you how you want to design and develop this game. Because at the end of the day, it's not my game. It's your game. I'm showing you how to create it. So there we go. So eventually we'll create the sequencing which will allow us to move to the next level. So next episode what we're going to do is apply the mathematics to all of this to get a score complete. Uh, we'll also look at a main menu and we'll also look at an animated splash screen. So a splash screen is basically your game studio or something like that. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.